Welcome to the Next.js full course. In this video, we are going to talk about how we can access to the request headers and also how to validate them. I've done extensive research to find a way for validating the request headers, and I'm here to share it with you. So welcome to Sakurative channel, and without further ado, let's get into it. So I open up our Next.js project that we've been working on through this course. So here we are in the property controller, and we have a patch request here, which is mapped to the update function. So in order to access to the headers of this request, we can easily use the at headers decorator. So inside the parameter list of the update function, which as I said, is mapped to this patch request, we're gonna use the headers decorator. So here I'm gonna use at headers and make sure that you import this from the nest.js slash common. Now we can access to the whole headers object and we can have a parameter name, for example, header. The name of the parameter doesn't matter here. It's up to you to choose the name for the header object here. And here inside the body of this update function, we can just access to the header object. So now let's run the project, open up our terminal, npm run start colon dev. Okay, let's go to the insomnia. And here, as you can see, we're going to send a patch request to this slash property and then slash an ID. Okay, and here I go to the header section. You can see we have these properties in our header. And if I click on the send, you can see we got them in the response of the request. So in this way, you can access to the headers object of your HTTP request get back to VS code. And here we can also specify a property inside the header object. For example, we can specify the host here. And now we just return the host from the header object. If I get back to insomnia and send the request, now we can see we have only the host inside the response object. So yeah, with the headers decorator, you can access to the headers object. In the next section, we're gonna enforce the validation on the request headers. In this section, we are going to validate the request headers. So in the first step, we need to create a DTO for the headers object. So I go to the DTOs directory here and then create a new file. I'm gonna call it headers.dto.ts. And here we need to export a class. I'm gonna call it headers DTO. And here, for example, let's say we are going to expect a new field in the headers. And here, for example, let's say we're gonna expect a header for access token. So here I'm going to use access token in this class and it is going to be a string. Now we can use the class validator decorator to enforce the validation on this field. First, it is going to be a string. So I'm going to use is string decorator. And also since the headers are case insensitive, we're going to use another decorator, which is expose here. And inside this expose, we're going to pass an object. And inside that object, we're going to specify a name that is going to be present inside the headers of the request for the access token. In this case, we're going to pass an access and then dash token. And just here, let's import the expose decorator. So inside the header object, if we have access dash token key, the class validator will map it to the access token property inside the headers DTO. So with the expose decorator, we can map different keys in our actual object, which can be the request body or, or the request header into different property inside our DTOs. So now let's save this and get back to the property controller. And here, if I set the type of the header object to the header DTO, go back to insomnia now and go to the header section. As you can see, we don't have any access token inside the headers of this request. And if I click on the send here, we can see it doesn't raise any error here. So our validation doesn't work here. Go back to VS code and go to the property module. And you can see we have enabled the global validation on the module level. Get back to insomnia. And here, if I change the area to a string here, you can see it complains about the area that must be a positive number. So as you can see, our validation on the request body is working, but it doesn't work on the headers of the request. In order to enforce the validation on the request headers, we need to create a custom decorator for the request headers. So in this section, we are going to create a custom decorator for request headers. So I go to the pipes directory and create a new file. I'm gonna call it request-header.ts. 
and here I'm gonna export an object, export request header, which is actually the name of our custom decorator, request header. And we need to set it to a function, create pram decorator, which comes from the nestjs slash common. And we need to pass in callback here. It is going to be an async function, which takes a value, which is going to be target DTO. We're gonna set its type to any, and then we need to access to the execution context. So we're gonna have a CTX and set its type to execution context. We're gonna talk about the execution context in the upcoming episode of this course in details. But for now, just know that it's a class that provides information about current context of execution within your application. We can do many things with the execution context. For example, we can access to the current request inside our application. So now let me show you how we can access to the current request with the execution context. Actually inside the body of the callback, we can access to the current request. So here we're gonna call the CTX, which is our execution context, that switch to HTTP and then get request. By chaining these two functions, we can access to the current HTTP request. Now we can access to the headers of the request. We just need to keep it inside an object. So I'm gonna say const headers and set it to returning value of this expression. Now we need to convert it to a DTO. So here I'm gonna say const DTO and set it to a function called plain to instance, which comes from the class transformer. Here we're gonna pass the target DTO and then we're gonna pass the headers that we've got from the execution context. And then we need to pass in configuration object. Inside it, we're gonna set the exclude extraneous values to true. So it actually stripe out the values that are not defined inside the target DTO. Next, we need to validate the DTO here. We just need to call the validate or reject function. It's a async function. So we're gonna use await and then validate or reject, which comes from the class validator. And then we need to pass the DTO that we've got in this line, okay? After that, we just simply return the DTO. And here we forgot to use a const here and there is gone and we're good to go. So let me do a recap here. We first create a custom decorator with the create prime decorator function. Inside it, we're gonna pass in callback, which takes a target DTO object. Since we're gonna use it with different DTOs, we just set its type to any, and then we need to get the execution context. Inside the callback, first we're gonna get the headers of the count request with the execution context, and then we're gonna turn the header to the target DTO that we've got here and then we're gonna validate the DTO and just return the DTO. So here, if the validation fails for any reason, you just throw a bad request exception with the validation messages. And if we pass the validation, we just return the DTO. So now we can use the request header decorator inside our property controller. So I go to the property controller and here, instead of this headers decorator, we're just gonna use request header custom decorator that we've just created. And then we need to pass a new instance of the validation pipe validation pipe and inside it we're going to pass in configuration object we're going to set the whitelist to true and if i go back to insomnia and first let me pass a positive number to the area and here you can see we don't have the access token inside the headers of the request if i click on the send and we have an error here let's get back to the vs code i go to the request header decorator and here i think we misspelled the headers here it should be headers not header so let's fix that get back to insomnia and click on the send you can see even we don't have the access token inside the headers we don't have any error so let's get back to VS Code and one important option that we need to set here in the validation pipe is that we need to set the validate custom decorators to true now if I get back to insomnia and click on the send here you can see it complains about the headers and says that access token must be a string. So as you can see, now we have the validation on our request headers. Now let's create a access token here, access dash token, and set it to a random string and click on the send. You can see now we have the access token inside the headers of the request. So we have striped out these headers out of the headers object. So if I get back to the controller and here 
remove the wired list and get back to Insomnia and click on the send, you can see we have the access token here along with other properties in the request headers. So if I remove the access token and click on the send, you can see now it complains about access token. So yeah, in this way we can apply validation on our request headers. So let me do a recap here. First we need to create a DTO for the header. Make sure to use the expose decorator if you have different key in your request headers object and we want to map it to a different property in your DTO. Then we're going to need to create a custom decorator request header just like this and then we can go back to our controller and use that custom decorator request header to access to the headers object and also we need to pass an instance of the validation pipe class and then very important option here we need to set the validate custom decorators to true since it is a custom decorator and with that we can access to the request header and also validate them so yeah that's it for this episode if this video was helpful for you please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure to subscribe to the channel it will be a great support for me and gives me more energy to create such a free tutorials for you thank you for your support and also make sure to turn on the notification so you don't miss the next episode of this tutorial you can access to the next episode through this link here and also access to the full playlist through this link here have a nice time and see you in the next video bye bye